Hi, I'm Wendy Baldwin, President of the Population Reference Bureau, and we've just released our 2012 World Population Data Sheet. And you'll find on there some indicators that are new to you, but they reflect a global health phenomenon that really is something new that we need to consider. So for a minute, let's think about when we think of the developing world and we think of people meeting their death, it's often from infectious disease or communicable diseases like tuberculosis or malaria or AIDS. But we know that in the wealthier countries, mortality usually comes through the chronic diseases, the non-communicable diseases like cancer or heart attack or stroke. But you know, something is changing in that picture. And the change is the rise in non-communicable diseases in the low and middle income countries. They now account for most deaths. The numbers are rising. And as you can see from this map that shows the risk of dying before the age of 60 of a non-communicable disease, those risks are high in the poorest of countries. Of course, some of that early mortality can be the result of weak health systems, but it's more than that. Let's look at South Asia, for example. The mean age of first heart attack, not death, but heart attack is 53, and that's six years younger than the rest of the world. Also, these deaths from non-communicable diseases frequently are preceded by long periods of, of ill health. And that means that more and more people are affected by these diseases during their economically productive years and during the time when they have significant family responsibilities. So NCDs are a rising concern for the low and middle income countries. And if we take a look at this graph, we're gonna see not only is that level high, but the projections for 2030 show that it's continuing to rise. Even in Sub-Saharan Africa, where currently the rates are lowest, by 2030, almost half of the deaths will be to non-communicable diseases. And 2030 is not that far off. Now, what exactly do we mean by non-communicable diseases? There are thousands of them. But the World Health Organization has identified four that are really driving these global patterns of mortality. And they are cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, and most cancers. And they've gone further to identify four underlying risk factors that are really responsible for at least half of the risk of those diseases. They are tobacco use, diet, and particularly obesity, sedentary lifestyle, and excessive alcohol consumption. But what do these four risks have in common? Well, two of them are behaviors that start during youth or adolescence, tobacco and alcohol. And the other two positive health behaviors are ones that are best solidified or reinforced during youth and adolescence, good diet and active lifestyle. One of the things that may contribute to a rise in these risk factors is, oddly enough, urbanization. You know, rural life is hard, but it was rarely sedentary. But urban life often brings with it more reliance on shelf-stable foods that are not as healthy as fresh fruits and vegetables. And getting out and being physically active may simply be more difficult. It may be unsafe. And there may not be locations. And what we've also seen is that most countries are experiencing a rise in their youth population. And that is a time when exposure to alcohol and tobacco not only occur, but the younger of those behaviors are tried, the greater the risk of addiction. Now, it may be good news that there are behavioral interventions that could lower the risk of NCDs, but some people figure it's very hard to change behavior. And yet we have examples from around the world of projects and activities that have been successful. Here's some data from Mexico that shows the relationship between the price of tobacco and the consumption of tobacco. And the interesting thing here, there are two things. The first is, I could show you this graph from any number of countries, and that relationship still holds. The other thing is, youth are even more susceptible to an increase in price than our adults. And so here we have an intervention, certainly not the only one, but it is one where we have growing body of experience to show how you could actually lower tobacco consumption in youth. And there are other examples 
of communities that have found ways to enhance physical activity, maybe through sport, maybe through dance, maybe through just making their streets safer. So for each of these risk factors, we think it is possible for the global community to learn from each other and to develop interventions that really look appropriate for their particular setting. The low and middle income countries have a real opportunity to take very positive steps to confront that rise in non-communicable diseases and to address the risk factors that drive them. And perhaps we could think of adolescence as being the last best chance to pull all those factors together and see what we could do about these global trends in mortality.